Horvat breaking in. Deeks scores. Right there all over. And he stopped by Zelto. He scored. Brock Besser. But right here, right now, TSN's director of scouting. He was a regular for Blake and... I, on the midday show, he will remain a regular in the new time slot. Our pleasure to welcome in Mr. Craig J. Button on 1040. Hello, fella. How was your summer? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm just wrapping up a, a kayak trip that I was in Desolation Sound for no the way. last four days. Really? I yeah. Am, yeah. Yeah. Eight of us went up there, my wife and uh, the six, uh, six uh, others. And uh, we uh, we sh- we were on a ship and we kayaked and we toured and I'm actually uh, getting ready to go into Cal- uh, into Toronto tomorrow uh, for Bob McKenzie's preseason ranking show. Well, first of all, thank you for spending your tourist dollar in British Columbia. Secondly, Desolation Sound sounds like it could be a name for the Canucks season 2017. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a segue! Oh, you love oh, a segue. I know, I know. Hey, first things first. <laughs> Horvat six years, five point five for per. What did you make of the contract? Bargoon. <laughs> that's what I think. Really? I think that's a really good deal. Well, I mean, I mean, Bull Horvat had over fifty points last year, right? And so you start to look. I mean, Jonathan Drew has signed a, 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 the same deal, thirty-three million over six years, and and the way salaries are working now uh, for players coming out of entry level, I, I, I think it's really good. I, I, I think Bull Horvat's going to be. Uh, in the 60-point range, and, and that's the dollar figure. And, I mean, yeah, we're seeing uh, salaries, you know, inch up a little bit higher, but I like the fact that it's six years. I, I mean, if you were to told me that it was 5-5 five, five, uh, for uh, for three years, I don't think that would have been a, a good deal for the Canucks. But I think for, for Horvat, it's a good deal. I think he gets valued. I don't think he's going to be a, a high, high-end score, but I think he's going to be an important player on a team that, uh, has designs on winning in the future, and I, I, I think for those reasons. And, and then you also have to consider that, uh, that, you know, they bought two years of unrestricted free agency, and, and you know, that's significant as well. So, yeah, you factor it all in together, and I, I, I think it's a good deal for, for Orbat. I think it's a really good deal for the Canucks. They bought two years of unrestricted free agency, and without having to agree to any kind of no-trade or no-move clause, Craig, but uh, we heard many people last week saying, Boy, they gave him Drouet money, and I'm not sure he's got the pedigree or the scoring potential of Drouet. Why wouldn't he settle in a, clo- a little closer to Wenberg at four point at four point nine? Effectively, yeah, is guess- he closer to Wenberg than he is to Drouet at this stage of his career? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, do, do you know what I would say? I, I, I would say he's probably somewhere in between. You know, uh, you know, Bo has had had a little bit more. Uh, proficiency in the National Hockey League than Wenberg. I mean, Wenberg, uh, you know, we're talking about similar similar ages. And uh, certainly, you know, you, you, I think if you're the Canucks, you'd like it to be a little bit in at the closer to 4-9 based on the numbers. But I also think, too, that for, for what Bo is going to do with your team, and I, I call Bo an important player for winning. I think that Bo is a is a player that's not going to just contribute in terms of the stat sheet. He's going to contribute in a lot of areas. He, he's going to kill penalties. He's going to play on your power play. He's going to produce points. He's going to be able to play against the other team's, you know, top players. And 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 I think that he's going to be able to to, to get. Uh, on the right, on the on the positive side of the leg, you're playing against those other players in terms of shutting them down and scoring. And so, I think when you factor in all those things together, I think that the value is not just reflected in points; it's also reflected in how the Canucks views those uh, contributions going forward. And and I think all those areas are really important. From uh, one Canuck uh, youngster that you like to another, we know your feelings about Brock Besser. You said it on the draft floor. That you thought it was a great pick, and Canucks were so anxious to take a look at him. They, of course, burn a year of his ELC with the late look-see that they got, and he looked very good uh, on a National Hockey League stage at the end of last year. Four would, goals, nine games. Would it be a a failure on the part of the organization to not have him in the National Hockey League this year. How how important is that ELC in factoring in whether or not he should play in the NHL this year? Well, okay, so two things on the ELC. He, he's going to find himself in a situation at the end of this contract where he's not going to have enough games to qualify for, uh, uh, you know, he won't be able to get an offer sheet 
<laughs> so yeah. he's going to find himself in the same position as Johnny Goudreau. So even though you're burning, you're on the ELC, you know, you're looking at a player that's older. You're not, you're not burning it at 18. You're, you're, he's, he's older in that respect. So I, I don't think that that hurts the team long-term. And, you know, they wanted him out and they wanted him to get that experience coming into this year. So I, I, I think you look at it straight in terms of, can Brock Besser help your team? Can Brock Besser contribute at the NHL level? I'll be straightforward with you guys. I have no doubt in my mind Brock Besser is an NHL player. Now, if he shows that he might need a, a little bit of seasoning in the minors, might have to go down, that's okay. I, I, but I don't think you should be looking at it as, you know, saving a year on the on, – on, on the, because you're not saving a year on the ELC anymore because he burned the contract at 19. He's a 20-year-old player now. So once his minor league salary kicks in, one game, pro, he, that, that, that burns a year on the ELC. So they're not saving anything by having him in the minors. So you got to keep that in mind, too, that he, he's not a 19-year-old player. He's a 20-year-old player. I just think we've, we've heard the refrain so often, to be successful in the NHL these days, you need to have somebody contributing on an ELC. The, the, the good teams, have you're getting a surprise contribution from a young player. If they go and season him in Utica, when it looks like he might be capable as a National Hockey League player, are you wasting an opportunity to have a contributor on an ELC on the team? Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Sorry, Blake. I, 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 I misunderstood your first question to a, to, to a certain extent. Well, I, I, I think, again, it comes down to competency. Is he, is he able? You don't want to just keep a player in the NHL if he's not contributing. And that's where I have no doubt that Brock's going to be able to play. I, I mean, I, two years ago when North Dakota won the NCAA championship, he was, in my view, he was arguably one of the very best players in, in the entire NCAA. I know Jimmy Vesey won uh, the, the Holby Baker, but I, I thought Brock Besser was one of the top three or four players in the entire NCAA as a freshman. Mm-hmm. And now he goes back last year. He has the wrist injury. He's not able to participate in the World Junior. But he came to Vancouver, and he showed a proficiency. I think that that same proficiency that he showed at North Dakota as a freshman last year coming into Vancouver, he will show that. He's a mature player. He's a smart player. And more than that, he is a really talented player. And I think that when you're looking at players on ELCs, Blake, you want players that can contribute at a, at a, at a contract value far beyond what that dollar figure says. One year and two million for Thomas Vanek on the first of September. Where did that come from? Do you like it? What are they seeing there? And was it bargain bin shopping that was wise, or was it the signal that their plan isn't fully uh, together? If you're shopping there, for there, players, there might be a better uh, storyline in there uh, too. September first, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I'm not, yeah, there might be, but I, but I also think too, like you know, Thomas Vanek has been a score in the National Hockey League. I mean. I'd, I think at $2 million, based on what the, the market values are, I think that's a good figure for, for uh, Thomas Vanek. And, and, I, and I think what you want to do, you, you guys have heard me say this previously, that you want to be able, that, like let's say Brock Besser is struggling a little bit scoring. Now, now the Canucks are struggling scoring. And, you know, uh, Travis Green might not have opportunity to look down the bench. You've got to keep pushing Brock Besser or others like them, younger players out there. But now he has Thomas Vanek. And that pressure doesn't have, that doesn't have to be, uh, you know, squarely on the shoulders of, of, of a player, a young player like Brock Besser when he goes through those inevitable challenges. I mean, think about last year when Austin Matthews had the great beginning, really showed, they went 13 games without scoring a goal. Well, there's some other players that could take the pressure off of them. And I think that's what Thomas Vanek does for Brock Besser. Because like any young player, they're going to run into those, uh, into those patches uh, where, where you run a little bit dry. And I, I think for Thomas Vanek, at $2 million, his, his record, he's inconsistent. He's an inconsistent scorer. But I think at the end of the day, he, he, he's got the capability to get you 16, 18, 20 goals. And that's okay. Okay, next week we start on the draft. I know it will just be preseason, <laughs> but you know I can't get enough of my Craigslist, and we already got listeners asking draft questions. When's which, the official which Craigslist? Which I couldn't, couldn't possibly with good conscience ask today, but next week we're free and clear. When is the official first Craigslist? It was, uh, it was out two weeks ago. Oh, was it really? I missed it. Huh? No, uh, no, 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 sorry. It was out last week. It was out last Tuesday. Okay, the brilliant. After, uh, the day after uh, 
So, yeah, I mean, you can ask me anything you want. I mean, Rasmus Dahlin, to me, stands alone at number one. It, to me, he's a number one defenseman uh, that can play the game any way you want. He's got a little bit of pronger in him in terms of being that little, that physical player. He's got a great mind with the puck, really good defensively, and he's a he's just an uh, outstanding skater. And, you know, just as a little tease, Bob McKenzie uh, tomorrow will have his preseason ranking show, of which I'll be a part of, and uh, Rasmus Dahlin will be number one. And I think when you see how the way Bob has tabulated it, it's a unanimous number number one at oh, this wow. point in time. Great stuff, Craig. Safe travels. We'll catch up next week. Yeah, thanks for having me. I uh, look forward to a great year. Uh, as do we yeah, with we Craig J. Button, yeah. TSN's Director yeah. of Scouting, who is a uh, magnificent addition to this show because of his insight on the players, well, draftable players, players in the AHL and Europe. You'll hear. You'll hear. Believe you me. He's got back-to-back Swedes, by the way. Adam, I Bo- saw that. Adam Boquist, number two. I saw that. Svechnikov down at number three, the big Russian winger who uh, and then another chose Kachuk. to play in Barry in the OHL. So uh, two uh, two legacy players, yeah. brother Svechnikov already drafted, of course, and brother Kachuk already drafted. How did I miss Craigslist coming out last I, week? They, do, they need to promote this. Absolutely. Got past me. Got past my phone.